Today, we're going to look at an implementation pattern that solves a big problem for us. As Unity devs, we're always looking for ways to communicate between components and game objects without needing them to be aware of each other. As a software engineer, I often implement the event bus pattern to solve this problem in the real world. In this video, we're going to build an event bus system for Unity and also bootstrap it on game load. Along the way, I'm going to explain each of these advanced Unity and c -sharp techniques. At the end, you'll have a powerful messaging system to use in your projects. Let's get into it. The system will have two parts, the event bus and its events, and then the code that will bootstrap and configure the system when the game starts. We'll create the event bus first. Let's start with interfaces. All events in our system will implement the iEvent interface, and the iEvent binding interface will represent a relationship between action and an event of type T. We'll have two public properties here, so the action we add to the binding could either use the event type as the argument, or it could be a no args action. In the concrete binding, I'm going to store the actions in private fields, and we'll expose them using an explicit interface. An explicit interface implementation will enforce the requirement to store bindings as the interface type and not the concrete event binding type. We'll see that when we declare new bindings. Now, I'm also going to store an empty delegate into each of these events so that they're never null and we don't have to waste time with null checks on a binding. We can also write this in shorthand, like so. Let's declare two public constructors for the binding. The first one can pass in an action with a parameter of type T and assign that to the on event variable. The other can pass in our no args action and assign that as well. All right, I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit with some expression bodies here. And let's add a couple more public methods here so that we can add a few more actions or remove them if we want at runtime. So after we've declared an event binding with one action and we decide, oh, we will want two actions to actually happen, we can just do that in whatever class is declaring this binding. So that's just about everything we need related to bindings. I'm just going to move all the binding related classes into their own file here called event binding. Then we can come back here and start working on the actual bus. So our bus is going to be the hub of activity for an event type. We're going to store all of the bindings related to a type of event, and we'll put all those into a hash set. Let's have two public methods to register and deregister a binding from the bus. And we'll need a public method that will accept an event and invoke both the actions on the binding. Normally, there will only be one action defined, but recall that we assigned empty delegates already, so neither action should be null. I'm also using the at symbol here so that I can use the event keyword as a variable name. This isn't really necessary, but I wanted to show that in case anyone wasn't sure what that means. Next, I want to start working on concrete events. So I'm going to create a new file called events, and I'm going to move all event related code into there. We don't need too much here, but I want to have a couple that we can test with. Let's have a test event that has no data. Let's have a player event that sends around a little bit of data about the player. That way we'll be able to test it out in Unity. I also think I'm going to use structs over classes because structs are allocated on the stack, not the heap. And so it'll put way less pressure on the garbage collector. So let's come over to our hero. Now our hero will need two bindings, one for our test event binding and one for the player event binding. And we're going to need to run some methods when those events get raised. So let's just make a really simple ones that output some debug statements. So the first one, the test event, isn't going to receive any data, so we can just debug a statement. But the other one will receive a player event, and that player event has two variables in it. So let's output those to the console as well. Okay, now on enable, let's define the bindings and register them to the event bus of their various types. Looks like Copilot figured that one out, no problem. But let's also make sure to deregister from these events on disable. One more thing before we leave the hero behind for now. Uh, let's define an update method where we have a few key presses, which will raise these events. So whenever we press a key, it should tell the event bus, raise the event, and any bindings that have been registered to that bus should fire off their actions. Okay, so at this point, we've basically written all the code we need to have a working event bus, except you may have noticed one thing. 
we haven't actually defined any concrete types of event buses. And that's what we're going to look at next here. What we're going to do is bootstrap this system up by looking through these four assemblies that Unity puts together when it's compiling your project. There are four total, two for runtime and two for the editor. I'll put a link in the description to these docs. Now, before the game even starts running, we are going to find every type of event in these assemblies and we're going to create a bus for them. This won't include your own assembly definitions, but you can add them to the tools we're about to make. I'm going to split this into two parts. First, let's make a tool that will search through these assemblies and find all instances of a type. I'm going to define the assembly types as an enum because I don't want to make any spelling mistakes later. When we're searching through the assemblies, we're going to get the values back as strings. So we can just relate those to these enum types and use those enums going forward. So what I'll do is just make a little method here that will translate a string response into an enum value. I'll set up a switch in here that will return the correct enum value based on whatever string we pass in here. It looks like Copilot already has that figured out, so this looks good. Uh, remember, it could possibly return null because Unity isn't going to compile any of these if there's actually nothing in them to compile. So if you didn't have any editor scripts, for example, those, e those editor ones won't even exist. So moving on, let's have a public method where we pass in a type of interface and we get back all the list of concrete types. So in our case, we're looking for all the I events and we want to get back things like player event, test event. First of all, let's grab all the assemblies from the current domain. Now we need a dictionary here so that we can store all of the types we find in each assembly and associate it with one of our enum values. What we'll do is we'll just iterate over all of those assemblies. As long as the assembly isn't null, we'll add every single type we've found into our dictionary when we're going to refine that search in a moment. Okay, now that we have a good organization of what types were found in which assemblies, let's make a helper method that will further refine our search. It'll take in all those types, it'll take in a reference to the type we're looking for, and it'll have a results as well. We'll just call that types. So that the types will be represented as an I collection, and that's what we're going to return when we're done this whole method. So I'll just come up here, private method, It'll take in those arguments and then it, all we're going to do is make sure that the assembly the, that's containing all the types isn't null. If it is like there's there was nothing inside of it, let's just bail out. Uh, otherwise, let's just iterate over it. And if we find one that matches the interface that we're looking for, let's put it into the types collection and we'll just keep populating that with all the types that we find. So here, if the type wasn't the actual interface, like it's not I event, and we'll use the method is assignable from to make sure it actually implements the interface. If it matches those criteria, it's going into the types collection. Okay, well that class was somewhat complicated. So what I'm gonna do is get the JetBrains AI assistant to quickly write up some documentation for this so that I can put this in the repository. And if you guys are looking at it later, it'll have all these notes and whatnot in there. I also see I need to rearrange my arguments down here in this method calls. Okay, now for the really exciting part. I'm gonna create a new class that'll hold all of the utilities for our event bus, and I'll move it into its own file here before I start writing any code. This is gonna need references to all of those event types that we just found using our other tool. We can just make it an I read only list and we can do the same for all of the event buses that we're about to create. So what we're going to do here is use a special attribute that Unity has that lets us execute code before our game even starts running. And that is the runtime initialize on load method attribute. And here you can specify when you want this thing to actually go off. And we're going to say before scene load. What we're going to do is run a method. I'll just call it initialize. Let's get all of those types using our static method that we just wrote. And then I'm going to initialize all of the buses in a different method. So this next method here will just return a list of types of our new generic buses that we're creating. Let's store those in a private variable first. I'm going to also store the type of a generic event bus into a variable. And then I'm just going to loop over all of the event types that we found and use the make generic type method that's from the type class 
to create an event of each type. So that means we're going to make an event bus of type test event, event bus of type player event, and so on. Now, finally, before we leave here, let's make one more utility method that we're going to need, and that is to clear all the buses. All we need to do here is iterate over all of the buses we made, and let's use reflection to find a method on it called clear. Clear, we'll have to write that in one second here, but it'll just empty out all the bindings. Let's jump over to the event bus class and just add that clear method. Very simple. I want to add a little bit more functionality here, just a very quick little cleanup. When we come out of play mode and back into the editor, we should ensure that each bus that we've created is empty. This will remove any potentially unresolved references to objects, which would prevent them from being garbage collected, could lead to a memory leak. Clearing these bindings when play mode changes is a best practice. To do this, I'm going to use another attribute called initialize on load method. This is just like the runtime version, except it's for the editor. So if we keep a variable that knows which state we're in and we start listening to the play mode state change on the editor application, then every time that goes off, we can register our state. And if it is exiting play mode, we'll clear all the buses. Might as well get JetBrains AI to write up a bunch of documentation here. I'll read over it and make sure it's all correct and maybe add some links right in here too. And then this will be in the repository for you um, to have a look at later. If there's one thing that AI is really good at, it's very good at writing documentation. So I've compiled the code and clicked play and right away you can see it's initialized both the buses that I expected to have. Now, if I click the A key, there we go, test event received. So the player got the message. If I click B, yep, we get the player event with the expected values. Both my health component and mana component were set to 100. I'll come out of play mode and right away we can see it's clearing all the buses, the test event bindings and the player event bindings. So this is all working as expected, but let's do one more test. I've pulled in these sample orbs from the Chronic Liquid Volume 2 package. I want to use them in my UI for health and mana. Now I've already written a little script. As you can see, this is very similar to our hero. We've got a player event binding. We're going to define it on enable and register it. On disable, we'll deregister it. And all it's going to do is bump our health up by about 10% every time. I'm just going to come back into Unity and add that to the game object. So I'm going to hit play and start clicking the B key. You can see my health orb starts filling up by 10% each time, and we're still getting the messages about the player event on the hero, sending its debug message out to the console. I had a lot of fun creating this event bus. I plan to add more features to it in the future, and I'd like to hear your suggestions in the comments. Maybe in a few months, we can revisit this topic and create an even more powerful event bus based on your suggestions. There will be more advanced Unity videos like this in the future. So if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm also going to put a link up on the screen to my video about event channels, another powerful way to decouple your game objects in Unity. Make sure to check that one out too, so you have that option available, and I'll see you there.